I myself am also a global ambassador of the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce Philippines. And I know a lot of uh, members want to come to visit the expo. So it'd be nice if the information is shared to us, the links, the music. And well done and good luck to all the organizers for this. Uh, I think Ms. Bobby Ferreira, the chair of the PBC, will be in the best position to answer that issue. materials from the car membership of the Philippine Business Council will be aggressively distributing these campaign materials and also of course with uh, the UAP and the other professional groups, right Christian? Oh, but yes, we have the commitment. I will answer more Christian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Alec from CEO Club. Uh, I'd like to ask, you know, I know uh, Expo that uh, Philippines must have a great pavilion, but I want to go on the business side. What are the key focus of uh, investment in Philippines? If I can, if you can identify three to five industries, so then we can see how we can assist better and bring a business community to, to your pavilion in Expo. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Um, of course, in the, in the next six months, we're going to have a series of business activities as well to support the business program of the Philippine participation. Um, we have selected uh, key sectors that are specific for the Middle East and African um, market. Um, first, in December, we will be featuring a lot from the construction and related industry, related related industry sector, so that the architecture, engineering, furniture design, you know, up, up to even you know, electrical engineering probably. So, but definitely the, the key sector is construction. In the following years, in the following months, we will be focusing on food, as you know, that's our key and top export um, um, product here for daily eat. We're having several projects as well for personal care. We have one for furniture that, that's also to support our Manila Fame and SSX shows that are now all digital. We used to have them physically in Manila, but now we're going to have it physical. So we have special business-to-business -business matching events that will be done via Zoom. Of course, considering the pandemic, um, our site them, that's the Center for International Great Expositions and Missions in Manila, they Okay, uh, from the very beginning, we've always espoused the idea that when you spend taxpayers' money, you have to explain to the public, or at least you have to make them understand what a policy is for. And uh, so at the beginning of the of 2019, when we decided to uh, participate and confirm our participation in the Dubai Expo, one thing we needed to make sure is that our people should understand why we are spending money on something so far away from home. The Bogota is the story, as you all uh, been told, of the 4,000 year journey of the Filipino. And it just not, it's just not uh, a story of a few Filipinos. It's the story of each and every Filipino in the UAE, in Dubai, and in other members in particular. And because of that, there has to be the sense of ownership between the Bogota and the community, the public that we are sworn to represent and serve. And this is something that we had hoped to engage for as long as possible since the Bangkota is not just DPIs, it's not just the governments, it's more specifically the peoples. And this is one thing that we needed to make sure something like this, something such as this conference could elucidate so that our people have this sense that's why we say I am Bangkota, Tayo am Bangkota. So when we mean public or the Filipino community participation, we'd like them to come and visit the pavilion with the purview of trying to see and understand ano nga ba ang kanilang pinanggalingan. And from there on, be that beacon of understanding to the rest of the uh, other ethnicities and nationalities as well. We need to understand our story, where we have come from, where we are going, so that we could show our Indian, Pakistani, uh, European, African brothers, 
who the Filipino is and what we are able to contribute to the UAE and to the rest of the world. So we do hope that when we come up with a marketing blast, a campaign awareness on what the Bangkok is, we hope to entice our Kalabayans to visit the Philippine Pavilion, come up with a sense of epiphany, na ito pala ang daang Pilipino, this is where we are going, uh, this is where we are headed to, and then from there on, be uh, that beacon, as I said, to the rest of the other ethnicities, na ito kami, this is who we are, and this is what we contrib uh, can contribute to the UAE, to the rest of the global society. So, it, it, bringing a certain amount of respect, not only for us, but for the rest of um, the country. This is the participation that we are hoping for. It may have been designed by one person or a few, but it represents the heart and soul of 110 million Filipinos. So raise your flag. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joseph Pongo. I'm from New India, Canada. And uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman Paul and Cortez, for hi, sir. Where are you? Go back to the stage, please. <laughs> yeah. As part of uh, Dubai Media, we have been receiving a lot of media articles and coverage for the other pavilions for Expo 2020. I'm just wondering why bakit na yun lang for the PBC to come up with this one. Because we were asked by BDI, Department of Trade and Industry, headed by Asa Crosby. And I can only say that it's better late than never. As is a need of the dialogue. And I think. Off the backboard. <laughs> and you could see yesterday, I promise you, we had so much fun. And today, again, uh, despite all the stresses, it's all worth, worth it para sa inang bayan, para sa bayan inang spirit, and also because, um, yeah, we are all Bangkota. And I don't know if I'm replying your answer because I'm trying to beat around the bush. <laughs> and this is the first time that I will say, I am Josie and I am Baba. <laughs> And you have other social media platforms. We are counting on you because we need to promote Bangkota. We will be showing Bangkota video on uh, September 27. That's right after um, uh, the Ubi car and the uh, Ubi boy launching on, on uh, Saturday. And as I said earlier, we are with you. Again, we are Bangkota. Participation and uh, that's the reason why uh, 
with MPM, with BBDO Bank of Manila, with PCOO, with Your Health, the Filipino community, you know, with ABS-CBN. We have many of the partners helping us here in Dubai and Bank of Manila. We're happy to know that ABS-CBN and Capamilia, uh, I don't know how to call you now, or PFC, because the Arnold has always been there to help us at Bank of Manila, GMA7 as well. CNN Philippines are all helping us spread out the word that Balkota is here in Dubai. You know, um, it's, uh, it's not just one simple message, it has to be a multi layered message that we're doing right now. Thank you very much. I think we can cater to one more question. We have a question. Hi, good evening. Mark from San Marcos. Can you tell us a little bit more about Ube, Ube Boy, and it's, uh, how it's connected to the whole theme of the Pozzarino? Okay. 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 Ube Boy actually is, um, it's just a slang term no? for the character that we adopted. For, for the Expo, for Philippine participation. It's really, in, in the historical books, that character is Magbun. It's supposed to be uh, a, ma a male-female character that embodies the that ancestry of the Filipino. Okay? And he became a major character in our, in our Expo concept development. Because we wanted somebody to serve as our mascot, some, somebody who can better who can better be appreciated by all audiences as carrying the message of Pangkota. Um, Magbun is also the storyteller of the 4,000 year journey of the Filipino. Uh, he speaks about um, our ancient culture, uh, where we came from, and the journey that we had from all over Coming from, uh, coming from coming from the Australasian lands no, all the way to the Philippines. Right? And uh, uh, Ube Boy came only as a term when we were meeting with the creative community. Uh, we congratulate him for the design of our uh, pavilion. Uh, what actually, we understand the aesthetic value, but where did you get that inspiration among the many elements that you can think of? Why Bangkota? Oh, it's, it's a very important event. Uh, and it's always been, uh, for me, it's always been a discomfort um, for us to have this feeling you know, of inferiority. You know, uh, the colonial mind, you know, the colonial mentality, and uh, it seems like even if we feel that we are already freed from the from the you know, colonization, we still have this chain that we don't see, but we still feel. And um, it was something that I felt that I needed to break through architecture and design. And that's why I, when I bid on this project, I was invited by uh, Rossby and uh, I, I said to myself, I will do this, but it will only be worth it if I will express what I want to express. And, and that is why I said, there is no other way to say this, but to be able to say it truthfully, to express what's the nature of the Philippines. And uh, I, I think by, by, by nature, We've been defined by nature to be the center of the center of the marine biodiversity of the world. There is no other center. So by being the center, uh, I, I don't think there's any other country who will say I am another center. No. So it is by basically by birthright that the nature of the Philippines being shown that we are the center, I thought of the coral reef. And, and uh, as we all know, the coral reef is all over the world, like the Filipinos 
and we are all connected and, and we are one. And I think that was uh, a beautiful metaphor of the Philippines. Uh, Expo 2020, in particular, sa, in particular sa Bangkota. So, um, ang tanong ko po ay in relation naman po sa employment. Meron po ba tayong datos that a Bangkota or yung Philippine Pavilion na directly na nag-employ ng mga kababayan natin na patuloy na naghahanap ng employment dito? Or meron po bang oportunidad para sa kanila sa aming na buwan na uh, uh, exposition na itong ito? Workers, no? both here in Dubai and in Manila. Here in Dubai, we have to, um, we actually referred, even during the construction stage, no? we started working with companies who were hiring Filipino architects no? and the Filipino accountants. I was surprised, there are many Filipino accountants pala dito na, all the accountants of the major architectural firms here and construction companies here are Filipinos. Very surprising, but uh, it's a reality that is um, so uplifting, no? So in that respect, um, Bangkota uh, that uh, we brought here is not only employing Philippine talents back in Manila, but we made sure that we actually provided uh, opportunities no? for uh, talents here and workers to be also hired. Uh, by companies like Kraft, who built the pavilion, by our landscape uh, company in the, um, in the pavilion is a Filipina, um, I think in over, uh, Brazil, and uh, we actually referred many Filipinos to the, those construction companies so that they will hire the best, and you know, it's almost easier to work with Filipino suppliers, is what we found out, because if our budget is just this much, our Filipino suppliers can actually give triple our um, our contractor for the furniture is um, I think it's an Indian owned company but um, the Filipinos are the ones running it and uh, you can never realize exactly what kind of help they were able to give us because this is our contract with them but we needed so many more when we were here on site and they overextended themselves simply because they are Filipinos and we are Filipinos it's amazing how um, how easy it is no, to connect with Filipinos here in Dubai and to be able to get the best talents. Every time we talk to our construction company and um, even our AOR, they say they trust the Filipinos, especially when it comes to money, to finance. Isn't that also amazing? No? The trust and confidence is in the Filipinos here in Dubai. Um, sino ba Yung ating mga... The event management company that we hired is a Filipino. The culinary management company that we hired is Filipino owned. Um, the Mangrove Cafe, uh, we worked with Razons initially, we are their partner here, the Emirati. They're now running it totally, the Emirati company, but the staff are coming from actually Manila and they're also hiring from here. The chef is Chef Andrew. I'm not sure if you've met him, but he's a Filipino. We talked to Sinieros, uh, there are about five um, Filipinos based here, Filipino chefs, and they're the ones who created the Bangkota menu that you should try at the Magro Cafe. Um, ano pa? Yung mga... The Filipino Food Festival, we're talking all the restaurants, uh, the Filipino-owned restaurants, to celebrate Philippine cuisine. We should be able to present a different facet of Philippine cuisine, very authentic, yet modern, yet international, accepted internationally. Not something that we ourselves only appreciate, but something that can be appreciated globally. So that's what we want for the Philippine Food Festival. That is actually um, sponsored by the Department of Tourism. Um, our fashion designer is Ezra. He was so good as to lend his expertise when he said, I will design your uniforms for you. And Royal and I would work with him to be able to come out with a line of attire for to costume our people at the pavilion. Adame, um, ang tawag nito, yung yun ang ating October opening. You know, I, I'll tell you a little story. For the opening of the Philippine Pavilion, 
our original idea really was to bring a Philippine delegation led by Secretary Ramon Lopez, no? with Cabinet Secretaries, no? uh, Mr. Bello, the DOL confirmed, no? we were trying to get uh, the Tourism Secretary and Mr. Lopez and so on and so forth. But you know, we have to cancel it because of the pandemic. I think you all heard that back in Manila, the situation is not yet normal, not like here. But what we, so we have to think of something, no? We, we thought, we cannot open empty on October 1. My major concern is that, okay, we have a beautiful architecture, we are proud of Bangkota, but when we open on October 1, we are not sure that Expo will be able to bring in visitors into the, into the site. Why? Because there are so little international visitors coming here at this time, no? So can you just imagine that the Expo is depending on you, the Filipino community, to bring in the numbers to the Expo site come October, when they open their doors, no? Pero sandali, sabi ko, bago sila kami muna, no? Dapat sa October 1, tayo lahat, no? Uh, should be there to support the Philippine Pavilion. I mean, there's nobody else but us again, no? We're supporting one another. Um, when we were meeting with one of the professional groups, Chang is here, and Royal was here, they brought up the issue of um, professionals here in Dubai uh, trying to come together and getting help from government to be able to get more um, assistance no? in terms of like organizing and regulating your group. And suddenly you realize that really here in Dubai, most of the Filipinos here are professionals. They are well-educated. They are actually influential in the communities here in Dubai. And yet, they are... They, they are not recognized as a professional group. They are not really recognized as a professional group, no? You architects not there. Because maybe we should be able to um, ask um, Secretary Bell. Because the request is we should ask uh, Secretary Roman Lopez to influence the Professional Regulation Commission no? to set up an office here no? and uh, an attaché to be able to help all the professionals. No? But on the other hand, it's really the Department of Labor and Employment. And I said, okay, let's try from Mr. Lopez. So let's Let's talk to the labor uh, department, I guess, no? and the labor attaché should also like look closely at how to extend the helping hand to the professional community instead of just, um, I guess, um, concentrating on labor problems. No? Because right now, labor problems are the number one issues. We don't, we don't really, let's like, say, no to those, but that's just one of those jobs that can be done by, I guess, our labor department. But I think the professional community here is very strong. I'm glad I met the Philippine Business Council finally, because for the PBC, in fact, uh, the professionals no, um, are being given a bigger role in the community, but it's time that the Dubai government and the UAE government recognize how big your group is, how influential you are, and if you are removed from this society, what will happen to their economy? It's something that they have to realize, and therefore all the, the, the assistance that they can expect should be given to you. We hope we can help. But anyway, nandito naman si Conche, uh, nandito si na Ambassador, nandito si Chang, no? And we will try to help put together uh, what you want. I think it was Christian. Where's Christian? Christian was the one who brought up the issue of the PRC, um, having a presence here. And then you actually can have a PRC, it's just the labor department of labor can do that actually for you. The greater, you know, uh, ay, ang dami ko na nasabi. Kami sa Bangkota, we would not have been able to deliver this project, alright, without the big, strong, expansive, influential Filipino community here. They are there in the thousands, in the 2,000 workers I was telling you, the big chunk of the 2,000 really will be the inputs of the Filipinos who are working as accountants, architects, engineers, no? uh, ano pa? project managers, no? 
lahat sila tumulong tuputang the uh, bangkot. And thank you very much to all of you. Maraming salamat. Once again, of our partner um, Filipino community organizations. Every Filipino who wants to eat, wants to volunteer their time and energy for the pavilion, please express your interest. So, uh, as, as we have a very big pavilion, actually, sa kulang yung staff namin. So, it's actually, and yung architecture, pan yung architecture pro, yeah, it has so many entry points, it has so many exit points, there's just no way for 10 people to, to cover the whole of the pavilion. That's why we launched this volunteer program. We also have a number of events where we will need manpower. Um, well, we have the, the Philcom event in October, but we also have our December event. So as you can imagine, December is always a very important time for us. And we also have a delegation from the Philippines. And most importantly, in February is our National Day. So we will um, we hope that we can um, uh, trust you and get your support. And please, please also help us uh, during these times and again, if you have free time, maybe in the weekend, or maybe you have your day off, you know, a weekday, and you have time to spare, you have talent to spare, and we are sure you have talent to spare, uh, please uh, share your interest, and please be a volunteer at the Philippine Expo Pavilion. Thank you very much. Again, an involved community is a healthy community. Uh, a big round of applause again for our panelists.